Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Dr. John Belkowitz. I'm the director of r and Intelligent Concrete. We're specializing in making concrete do the impossible. So um, we're getting into uh, an awesome series here. This is the second video of many, and it's on 3D printing of cementitious composites. Oh yeah, I said it differently again. Not 3D printing of concrete, because we're not using concrete, and this is really not a 3D print. This is more like me playing around with a grout bag and a mix and trying to create something. I did a few of them though. I actually did some letters. I did a lot of them. And then Whitney threw out like half of them and I had put like this whole scale behind it so I can measure the like change in height over time. Threw them all away. So pissed. Anyway, so yeah, we're getting into 3D printing of uh, cementitious composite structures. Uh, I'm pretty excited about it. So this is actually from a, a 3D print. You can see the bead is definitely more consistent and a lot bigger than what I was doing here in the lab with the grout bag. Um, and, and that's what we're looking for is uh, that consistency. But you know, we're not gonna be talking about the mix today. We're gonna be talking about structural design um, and the unknowns when it comes to 3D printing of concrete structures, cementitious structures uh, using cementitious ink. Um, you know, what we have to focus on is that we don't know what we don't know. We've never really, as a concrete construction, a civil en engineering uh, set of industries or even arenas, we've never really dove into this. This is very new. This is groundbreaking, no pun intended. So there are some major things that we don't understand and it has nothing to do with the type of 3D structure that you're printing. It's really just the generic concept of 3D printing. And my prediction, and I, we, should, we should write this down. What's today's date? July 26, 2019 at 8.07 a.m. Mountain Time. Within the next two years, maybe two to five years, let's say two and a half years to five years, ACI 318 will need to include some, will include, not will need to, will include some type of language or logic that helps engineers, architects, engineers, structural engineers design for three-dimensional concrete and cementitious composite structures. We're gonna need to, it's just becoming so darn popular and a lot of engineers are already starting to ask the questions that need to be asked. So what are some of the unknowns? I, I wanna break them up into three categories. Um, dynamic loads, and I'm gonna put that category into wind load, snow load, and seismic load. I mean, you can even go further than that, but I think those three are good, so dynamic load. Um, and then just the uh, restraint and the cracks that develop from the restraint induced by, or, or the, the, um, the energy induced by shrinkage volume change and the restraint from successive layers. And then the third thing is that we're gonna have to design for is just the you know, structural development of the house itself. Um, it's not easy, or house or these structures, it's not easy to put a uh, structural reinforcement, whether you're, it's not really the, the horizontal, but it's more the vertical bar that it's very difficult to get in, especially as you're going all the way around. You can't put anything to impede the, you know, the, the success of layers and putting a piece of rebar in there has a tendency of getting in the way of that 3D printer moving around the structure. You know, whether it's a, a open warehouse, a, a home or a, a infrastructure for a bridge you need to get around or inside so let's just dive into it so what we don't know is how the structure for the first one that I mentioned dynamic loads is how the structure responds to dynamic loads but more importantly dynamic loads over time or fatigue I mean we are talking about concrete here and concrete as we know does not respond well to uh, strain loads, tensile, shear loads, you know, anything that makes the concrete move back, it doesn't have a very high modulus of resiliency. So that being said, it doesn't, 
you know, uh, contain energy and release it well. It normally goes through a cracking uh, or a crack lengthening, um, uh, uh, ex uh, not exercise, a crack lengthening, um, oh gosh, what's the word? Mechanism? The cracks lengthen over time, especially when we see these repeated loading and unloading. So uh, whether it's seismic activity for primary and secondary loads, it's uh, you know excessive snow loads, ice loads, rain loads, we don't know how that will you know that structure will react, especially if we take into account um, the the second thing, which is those you know the strains that are felt because of volume change. Uh, whether that's plastic or drying shrinkage over time and the cracks that are induced. So if we start getting these crack patterns either early on or later on uh, during the, the whole hydration of the structure, this is even before it's being used. Once it's being used and start seeing those dynamic loads, um, that's going to have an effect on, you know, the, the cracking will be exacerbated by the fatigue and then we can have premature failure of the structure or I don't know how to answer that question just yet. And, you know, diving into the third one just a little bit more, you know, when it comes to a, a building a concrete structure, we've gone as far as, you know, as little as using the 3D printing to create the formwork and then going as far as to using the 3D printer to actually print the uh, total structure itself, the wall, the structural component of it. But, you know, is... Are we designing it with the factors of safeties that we need? Like right now, as I said before, we don't know what we don't know. What we need to do is start testing out these structures, putting you know strain gauges in them, looking at them over time, looking at them in environments with nobody in them, actually putting structures out in some nasty accelerated environments and possibly even putting them on shake tables to answer these unknown questions about how these structures will respond over time in inclement conditions. I mean, that's one of the things that we have to do when we design. We have to design the structure with running room in mind, that there needs to be a factor of safety. When it comes to designing uh, reinforced concrete beams or different structures, you have three different failure zones. And I, and I know that sounds weird, but that, that's what you're designing for, failure zone. You're designing so you're designing for the reinforced concrete to fail, but you're going to design it in a way that you want it to fail. And then there are three types of failures, a compression zone, a transition zone, and a tension zone. And with the tension zone and some part of the transition zone, you can actually see the failure, failure of that reinforced concrete structure occurring before you have catastrophic failure so that you have running room so people can get off the structure and not die as opposed to the lower end of the transition zone the compression zone where the type of failure is a catastrophic failure and there is no running room when we're working with three-dimensional concrete structures we really don't have that logic built out yet in a consistent and standardized manner as you would see in ACI 318 which is what we use for concrete structural design, it's not there yet. So I predict within the next two and a half to five years, July 27th, 8.07 a.m. Mountain Time, two and a half to five years, that ACI 318 will include something on the structural design of 3D printed cementitious composite structures. So yeah, let us know if you have any questions. I really love this subject. This is the next evolutionary step of construction in the concrete industry so let us know if you have any questions any concerns don't forget to like and subscribe ding that bell for details it's not details notifications, notifications. go concrete beat asphalt <laughs>